What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Everyone's favorite game journalism website out there, Kotaku, is currently crashing and burning with directives from GO Media, the parent company, saying that the rest of the people that are working as journalists at Kotaku need to start making game guides. The seven remaining employees there are directed to work on making 50 game guides a week instead of this woke garbage trash that they've been focused on for the past few years. It's all coming full circle. Who'd have thought that being openly racist to your audience would make people not like you? Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article discussing the destruction of Kotaku, a website that I, like many of you, have visited periodically over the past decade plus or so throughout our time playing games. And over the past couple years, it's really ramped up in its wokeness and its approach to gaming in general, I kind of feel like they lost the plot. Once a juggernaut in the realm of gaming journalism, Kotaku is facing what many would put nicely as a challenging phase. The root of this upheaval stems from a new mandate from parent company GO Media requiring the team of journalists to churn out an unprecedented number of video game guides on a weekly basis. The move nearly instantly turned the company on its head, with some people quitting, crying on the internet, and wondering what to do with their lives. And this all started yesterday on March 21st, when Jen Glennon, one of the editors at Kotaku, said, Some personal news. I've resigned from Kotaku, and Jim Spanfeller is an herb. Okay, so this is someone who is taking issue with the new directive of Kotaku. Someone who's worked at Kotaku for a while saying, I'm not going to stop writing my woke articles. I want to be able to have the freedom to say what I want. And now you're directing me to make game guides for a video game website. Not that outlandish if you think about it, but what Kotaku has let their employees do for so long, I understand where Jen is coming from. It's what she got used to, it's what she enjoyed doing, and now this new directive flies completely in the face of everything she'd done leading up to this moment. And it got me thinking, why would Kotaku and parent company GO Media come through with a ridiculous mandate of, instead of... I don't know, writing what you want to talk about for so long that's been acceptable at Kotaku, change it over to you have to write 50 game guides between seven of you on a weekly basis, and the most obvious answer is most likely the truest. I posted on Twitter yesterday, Kotaku wanting their seven journalists to write 50 guides a week is hysterical for so many reasons. I don't even know where to begin. Let's be real. This is being done to clear the cattle without paying severance and avoiding pesky, woke, wrongful termination lawsuits. Bye, Felicia! Which was directed at Alyssa Mercante, or as many have said, her real name is Melissa Merchant, but she changed it to sound more ethnic, right in line with her headline that she used to have, Hi, you can't be racist against white people. Thanks for tuning in and displaying that proudly for all to see. Almost like daring Kotaku to fire her so that she could have a wrongful termination lawsuit and be able to extract money out of them, like an extortion type of thing. And Kotaku is not a moron. Geo Media, very smart people. They don't get in that position by being dumb. And what they are doing right now is a clear message to everyone working at Kotaku. You want to fight? Okay, we'll fight. Go actually do the work we hired you for. And if you don't like it, there's the door. We're not going to pay you severance. We're not going to worry about woke lawsuits. We're not going to deal with any cutting or termination or anything like this. No, nope. it's up to you. If you don't like the new mandates here, you are welcome to quit, walk out the door, and we will replace you with someone who will happily do it. And there is a balance here. I'd like to think. Sure, I'm taking the side of the big corporation in this case, which I very rarely do, but GO Media knows exactly what they're doing here, and they're taking advantage of a situation. But they've also let these writers and journalists to go as far as they did to this point before putting in these ridiculous mandates of what they want them to do moving forward. But in the same breath, I get it. Gaming journalists have gone down this ridiculous path they've blazed of not even caring about gaming anymore. It's all about finding out like what the latest trend of wokeness they can talk about 
cling on to, and then complain about just to jump to the next article and the next article. And I find myself talking about the video game realm and lately been covering this whole garbage with SBI, Sweet Baby Inc., and Gamergate 2 and everything that's going on. And I'm just like, I don't even like this stuff. I want to talk about video games. But at the same time, this is affecting video games. And if I don't talk about it, I'd be ignoring it. And then, in my opinion, I'd be part of the problem because I wouldn't be speaking up against it. So yes, I do want to get back to talking about games because I enjoy the games. That's why I started this channel in the first place. But like I said, sometimes you got to talk about this other stuff so that we're able to go back to talking about games the way we love them. Grums on Twitter had a great rundown of what's going on at Kotaku right now. He posted Jen Glennon, the editor-in-chief, tweeted that she has resigned. Mad Kotaku writers spill the beans. They must dump news and write gaming guides. Former Kotaku head Nathan Grayson tells us seven writers left must churn out 50 guides per week. And then Levy L. Winslow said, you know what? F it. Here's a small cup of tea. Management doesn't even care about the quality of the guides. They want us to aggregate them from other sites, like a literal content mill. That they're destroying people's livelihoods gags me, not in a good way. Okay, there's a, a joke I could make there, but no, because it's only acceptable if you're one of them. Anyways, he continues, Last thing I'll say is, someone at the top told us to just get guides done because the AV Club watches full seasons of a show and still produces their stories. That alone is proof that they don't understand what we do. And when I went to investigate this Levi L character further, of course he's locked his Twitter down and blocked everyone and just along the lines of everyone else working at Kotaku. They are so good at just throwing the trash out there at everyone, but when it comes back at them, they block everyone, close down their Twitter, protect everything, and say, oh, I'm not dealing with this because you guys are oppressing me and you're coming at me and bullying me. It's like, no, you're throwing this out there. Deal with the consequences of that. That's how this works. And Grums also went on to post, according to a source close to the situation, Kotaku's staff will be expected to create 50 guides a week at the site. Currently, Kotaku's homepage features a prominent game tips and guides module at the top of the page in a space that was previously reserved for major stories and breaking news. Staff members have criticized the homepage redesign on social media, noting that Kotaku's major source of traffic is not guides. True. People only went to Kotaku because it was like the, what kind of car wreck is happening there now? What kind of moronic journalist wrote a really dumb article now? I can't look away from this car accident. Let me go see it. That's what Kotaku turned into. And then we have other journalists like Carolyn Petit stating, extremely proud of Jen for taking this ethical stance in response to profoundly misguided anti-journalism edicts from GO Media Management and puts a white fist in the air as an emoji. I can't even with these people. They're still sticking together all the way down to failure. They don't jump ship. They will go down with it with their friends. And it's like the whole time they think they're the ones that are being oppressed. When the reality is business and money talk. Kotaku is not making the money they want to. This woke mindset is destroying them. Geo Media sees it. They're trying to nip it in the bud. Might be too little too late, but at least they're trying to go unwoke before they're broke. And honestly, taking a step back from all of it, just looking at it from a realistic perspective, if I owned a business and I had all these people hired and working for me and doing these things, saying these things, putting it out there on social media, flaunting it, flauntingly, openly racist against everything, I would take a stand just like GO Media is doing, saying, all right, I can't fire them because they'll come back at me with these wrongful termination lawsuits and these woke mindsets. It's, it's a dangerous, slippery slope to go down with some of these people. So let me do what I can from a business sense. And I'm just going to make their work life miserable. I mean, I'll keep the working conditions legal, but I'll make their day-to-day -day job as miserable as possible. That way, 
I get my cake and I get to eat it too. If they stick around here, they're doing garbage work. I can give them bad performance reviews and let them go a year from now or less based off of just not doing the mandated ridiculous stuff that I requested of them. It's an at-will employment, well, at least in California where many of these people are, where you don't have to work for the company if you don't like what they're making you do. And what Geo Media is doing is saying, okay, not going to fire you guys because we don't want to deal with these lawsuits. Not going to cut you. Not going to have layoffs so we don't have to pay any severance to you guys. We'll just make your lives miserable until you quit. And Jen quitting day one is exactly what they wanted you to do. You created this environment. Now deal with it. This is the bed you've made. Lay in it. That's what Geo Media is doing. And honestly, from my perspective, I love to see it. Anyways, those are my thoughts on what's going on with the car wreck that is Kotaku right now. And I know, there's a lot of people loving this. It's it's finally coming full fruition. Everything that we've seen over the past few years is coming together, culminating in this car wreck of crashing, fire burning down, and falling apart. Yes, these are human beings at the end of the day. Some people might even argue that fact, but... At the end of the day, they are human beings, and I do wish them well and hope they land on their feet. But holy crap, hopefully everyone, especially Alyssa Mercante, has learned a valuable lesson on how to treat not just your employer, but the people that read your media. Treating people with respect and honesty and understanding and listening to feedback and working with them. These people pay your bills, buy your food, pay for your meals, pay for your hotel stays, pay for your lights to be on. Treat them well, treat them with respect, and I think you'll be a lot happier in life moving forward. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you want more information, check out Smash JT for the full article. I will link this in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. This is pleasant. This is pleasant for the woods. It's when was the last time? Was the last time you were in the woods and you took a sniff? Was you it know, as nice as this? Smash JT! Smash JT!